My name's Olivia Maynard. I'm in experimental psychology at the University of Bristol. And I work in the tobacco and alcohol research group here. And my area of research is plain packaging or standardised packaging of tobacco products. In 2003, advertising promotion and sponsorship of tobacco products was banned. And what that meant was the industry could no longer market its products in the way that companies normally do. And the only remaining tool they really had was the pack. If you're a smoker, the average smoker smokes around 13, 14 cigarettes a day. That means at least 13, 14 times a day they get their pack out, they put it on the table, and the pack symbolises something. It's really important. It's about the smoker's identity. The way our research is different is that we've been using objective behavioural measures to look at the effectiveness of plain packaging. So a lot of the previous research has used questionnaire measures or focus groups or interviews to ask people what they think about standardised packaging. Whereas what I've been doing is using eye tracking predominantly to look at what actually people do when they see these packs and what, what do their eyes do when they see a plain pack as compared to a branded pack. We know from um, the psychological literature that attention is very closely linked to actual behaviour. So we can say that because people are looking more at one aspect of the pack, so namely the health warning, that will translate to behaviour later down the line. For non-smokers and weekly smokers, both adults and adolescents, uh, plain or standardised packaging makes them look at the health warning much more than they would on a branded pack. So that could lead to you know, increased knowledge of the health risks of smoking and potentially changes in behaviour. We didn't see that increase in attention among the daily smokers. And the most recent research that I've done shows that those daily smokers are actually actively avoiding the health warnings on the cigarette packs. At the time that the last government, Labour government, was in power and they were consulting on next steps in tobacco control, at that time there was a big fight back by the industry and so the government sort of said, well, we're interested in this but we want more evidence. And that's where research like Olivia's became so crucial because they needed the evidence to be able to take that next step. So the research was used by the Australian government in their court case against the tobacco industry um, and that led to plain packaging being introduced in Australia in 2012. And then it's been again used by the UK government in first their consultation on plain packaging and then again this year, very recently, in the updated review of the evidence, uh, the results of which came out very, very recently. The Chantler Review reported, and Olivia's research was really important to that, and helped him reach his conclusion that actually, although you can't say conclusively that standardised packaging is going to make a difference because it's not been in place for long enough, that actually the evidence all points in the right direction and is sufficient for the government to go ahead. Okay, and yeah. there's actually no difference at all really? in the number of eye movements towards the health warnings that were familiar and unfamiliar among daily smokers. Tobacco is a really interesting area because it is still the major preventable cause of premature death, but the things that we've been able to do over the last 10 to 15 years, when a government first came in with a comprehensive strategy, have had a major impact and have led to smoking rates amongst adults declining by more than a quarter and amongst children by more than a half. And that's been as a result of population level measures like banning advertising, promotion and sponsorship. And standardised packaging will contribute to that and it is research that will inform policy measures.